Chapter 8 Eric's Story Are we close to Eric's house yet? Raoul asked. Yes, but we must find the wall on this side of the water that forms part of his house. Eric created many false entrances and exits down here so that he can move about unseen or disappear in an instant. As I recall, we can get in through one of them from over there. They continued on, feeling around in the near dark for the wall. Eventually, the Persian pressed a stone sticking out from the wall. That was it. A small door slid open in the wall and they crawled through to the other side, making their way slowly and cautiously. Finally, they reached a trap door in the floor. The Persian opened it carefully and shone his lantern into the darkness below. We'll have to jump down here. It's not too deep. I'll go first. Here, take the lantern. Raoul heard a loud thud as the Persian landed on the floor. He passed the lantern to him, then dropped down himself. When the Persian shone the light around the room, they discovered that the walls of the room were full of mirrors, hundreds and hundreds of mirrors. Raoul was dazzled by the display of flickering lights and images the mirrors created. Where are we? This looks like one of his torture chambers, the Persian said. Raoul shuddered. What do you mean? Eric knows a lot about architecture, and he actually helped build this opera house. At the same time, he created this underground world for himself. I recognize his work, especially the trapdoors. The room was empty, apart from a metal rack in one corner and a piece of rope on the ground next to it. The only way out appeared to be through the trapdoor above them. The Persian walked over to the rope and picked it up, thinking to himself, Poor Bouquet. He died because he just knew too much. How do you know Eric so well? Raoul asked the Persian. I met him a long time ago. He is a complicated creature, sir, and evil. He knows no difference between right and wrong. Raoul wanted to know more about the beast that was controlling Christine and begged the Persian to tell him everything. His companion hesitated, but decided they needed a rest before moving on, and so he began to reveal the story of the Phantom of the Opera. I met Eric many years ago when he was just a young lad. I was chief of police in Persia at the time, visiting France on holiday. I was attending a circus in the countryside one day when I was attracted to a voice singing like nothing I'd ever heard before. A huge crowd was listening. Fascinated by this heavenly sound, I pushed my way through to see who was singing. When I saw his terrible face, I was horrified. What made things worse, the curious onlookers who paid to stare at his deformity treated him as nothing more than a freak. I learned from someone in the crowd that he had run away from home to escape the misery of his ugliness and had found some comfort and acceptance in the circus amongst the other poor unwanted souls there. He was once a brilliant lad with the ambition of becoming an architect when a gas lamp knocked over one night in the barn where he was studying put an end to his dream. He was helplessly trapped in the terrible fire until his face was burnt beyond repair and his life was changed forever. The scars on the outside, however, were not as deep as those on Eric's heart and soul. It's what turned him into a madman, determined to destroy everything around him. His mother forced him to wear a mask to conceal his deformity. She couldn't bear to look at her own son or to kiss his poor face. She hid from the stares of others and turned her ears away from their heartless remarks. It was her rejection that finally drove him to leave home. When he told me about his pathetic existence after the fire, I wondered if it would have been better if he had not survived. The circus served him well, though. He was able to develop the beautiful singing voice that drew Christine into his dark, dreadful world. He learned to throw his voice in different directions, 
so that no one could tell where it came from, and to perform skillful magic tricks which he later used to frighten and confuse everyone at the opera. I returned to the circus many times to hear him sing, and after a while, we became friends. I convinced him to return with me to Persia. I hoped that it was not too late to prevent the scorn of society from turning him against the world. I pitied him, but I didn't know then what wickedness already lay in his heart. Perhaps I was a fool. In Persia, I introduced him to the Shah, the ruler of the country, who I knew well. He found Eric fascinating, and helped him turn his interest in architecture into practical skill by having him work with his own builders to construct a palace full of secret chambers. It was Eric's genius that created a torture chamber just like this one. When the palace was completed, the Shah had all the builders killed so that its secrets could never be revealed. Eric was supposed to be killed too, but I felt responsible for him, so I helped him escape. We returned to France together, but then he disappeared without a trace. When I learned that one of the architects of the Opera House was living there, I thought it might be Eric and decided to find him. Sure enough, while he was working on the foundations of the Opera, he created his own private kingdom here within the cellars. This is where he now lives, hidden and protected from the cruel world outside. He has long wanted revenge for the misery others have caused him, and now he doesn't care who suffers for his pain. And so, here we are trapped in this torture chamber at the mercy of a madman. My greatest fear now is that he may find us before we find him. We must find Christine and get out before it's too late. Before Raoul could say anything, they were startled by a distant voice. As it grew louder, he saw sweat break out on the Persian's face. It was Eric. You must choose, Christine, between a wedding and a funeral. They could not make out Christine's reply as she was sobbing uncontrollably. When they heard his voice again, it was harsh. Why are you crying? Am I so terrible? All I want is to be loved. Is that too much to ask? I am already suffering terribly for you. Look at me! The Persian and Raoul looked around, desperately trying to find a way to reach Christine. As they kicked at the mirrored walls, searching for an opening, they aroused Eric's attention and his anger. What fool has entered my kingdom? He roared. Let me give you the warm welcome you deserve. One you'll never forget, if you ever live to tell the tale. Suddenly, hundreds of fiery lights filled the chamber and the damp cold of the room gave way to intense heat. Christine could only weep. 